So I've had a lot of questions about the public health risks of H3N2 influenza in dogs. Well, one of the problems with infectious diseases is we don't often say never. We deal with a lot of rare outcomes. We deal with a lot of things that can happen, and we take precautions because things can happen, but they rarely do. So let's think about influenza in dogs and the risks it poses to people. First off, can a dog infect a person with canine flu? Maybe. We don't really know. The H3N2 influenza that dogs have, we don't have any reports of it infecting people. Can it happen? Probably. It's probably very, very rare. Now, the bigger concern from the public health standpoint is creation of a new virus. So the canine flu mixes with another flu and causes problems in people. And yes, it can happen, but is it going to happen? Is it realistic? How worried should we be? So let's think about the different points that have to happen for this to occur. Well, first off, the dog has to be infected with canine flu. It can happen, right? In areas where flu is being transmitted readily in dogs in Asia, some parts of the U.S., it's a greater risk, but in most areas, the odds of any dog shedding canine flu, the virus is very, very low. Okay, well, let's think about what else has to happen. Well, for those viruses to get together, there has to be another virus in the household. So we have to have a person infected with human influenza in the household at the same time. Absolutely can happen. It's flu season right now around here, but the percentage of people that are shedding flu virus at any point, very, very low. So the odds of a dog being infected and a person being infected in a house at the same time, pretty low. But more has to happen than that. We have to be able to get these two viruses together in a host, a human or a dog. Probably that's more likely to occur in a dog because we know that dogs can occasionally get infected with human flu strains. So, but we're taking rare multiplied by rare multiplied by rare, so we're getting really, really rare. But let's go with that anyway. So we've got a person in the household and they're shedding flu virus and they infect their dog with it. And that dog happens to have canine flu at the same time. Really rare can happen, and that's what we're worried about, is those flu viruses getting together in that same host. But then some things have to happen. It's just not those two viruses being together in the dog. Those viruses have to change parts. They have to exchange some genetic material, and that isn't even the end of it. It's got to be a change that still makes it able to infect people, but it's different enough that we don't have good immunity from previous exposure to flu or previous vaccinations. We've created a new flu virus in this dog that can infect people and be transmitted by people. Again, really, really rare. But it's not even done at that point, because what has to happen now? Well, the flu virus in that dog then needs to jump to a person. And that can happen in the household, potentially, but it's a fairly short window of when animals or people are shedding the flu virus. Days, maybe weeks, but more in the days to a couple weeks of time. So let's say a dog is shed into that person. Then that person has to find another person and infect them, again, within that short period of time. So yeah, all these steps can happen, but it's really, really unlikely to happen. Because it's possible we pay a lot of attention to flu, and that's why we look out for new flu viruses. That's why we worry about transmission of flu. But everyone has to realize the odds of a problem happening from canine flu are pretty low. So what can we do? And this is where we fall apart sometimes. There are a lot of really easy, basic things we can do to reduce the risk. So how do we reduce the risk of this? Well, we can't really impact how that virus interacts with another virus. But we can reduce the risk of a dog being infected and we could reduce the risk of a person being infected, and we could reduce the risk of those viruses going back and forth from dog to person or person to dog. How do we reduce the risk of a dog being infected? Well, basic common sense things. Keep sick dogs away from healthy dogs. If your dog is out wandering around, you see a dog coughing, stay away from it. If your dog is sick, don't take it out in public. If canine flu is present in your area, vaccinate. Or if you're really worried about flu and it's not even in your area, you still vaccinate in case it comes there. What about people? Well, get a flu shot. You get a flu shot, you reduce the risk. It's not 100%, but it helps. How else can we reduce the risk of flu transmission in people? Well, wash your hands. Stay home if you're sick. Really basic things that we all know about. If your dog is sick, how do you reduce the risk of it spreading something to you? Well, don't let it cough in your face. Wash your hands. Reduce that, that close contact. If you're sick, how do you reduce the risk of you spreading something to your dog? Well, same thing. Don't cough in his face. Wash your hands. Reduce that close contact for a short period of time. And you know what? These things are easy to do and they protect us from more than just flu because there are a variety of things that we can pass back and forth between our animals and ourselves. And really easy things like hand washing, staying away from when you're sick, reducing that close contact in high-risk situations 
is what we can really do. We can worry about new flu viruses, we can worry about new pandemics, but at the end of the day, we can control what we can control, which is your animal's health and your health and how you interact with other people and other animals. So yes, we're always worried about new flu viruses. Yes, we're worried about H3N2 flu in dogs and what that could do to dogs and to people, but we have to keep it in perspective. A little bit of hand washing goes a long way. Thank <sighs> you.